Let me quickly give you now a list of the skills that changed my life forever. Right, I knew how to milk cows, but didn't pay well. Here's the first skill I learned that changed my life. Getting a customer, making a sale. If you share a unique product, talk about its merits, persuade someone that it's the best, they agree to buy, that's the simple art of sales. So we're not talking like high powered spacecraft technical skills here. It's simply sharing something you've discovered with someone else and doing it well enough to where they agree they would like to participate. Now here's what happened when I learned sales. It multiplied my income by five. Now it didn't take that much because I wasn't doing that well in farm country, but it did multiply my income by five. Sales, getting customers, laying that incredible foundation for an entrepreneurial career. So now I've got two skills, milking cows and making sales. Here's the next one I learned that changed me forever. And that's recruiting, introducing the business opportunity to new people, learning how to give a good invitation, learning how to give two kinds of presentation, formal and informal. And the third part of recruiting, of course, is following up. Once you start a new life, now you gotta take care of it, like a new mother would take care of her baby. You don't start a new life and abandon it. You start a new life and nourish it like a mother and protect it like a father. You gotta be both mother and father to a new person. Nourishment, ideas like a mother. Protection, help defend your new life against the encroachment of outside voices that would try to talk them out of it. So you gotta be mother and father in this art of recruiting. We call it being a sponsor. And being a sponsor is like being a bridge, helping somebody from darkness to light, from skeptic to faith, from not knowing to knowing, from no confidence in themselves to starting to gain confidence. You're the bridge that helps people from the shadows to the sunlight. It's one of the most exciting positions to occupy in all of network marketing industry is the bridge, helping people crossing the bridge out from discouragement into recognition. Being this bridge, that's what the recruiting magic is all about. You've got the answers. They've been looking for the answers. You've got the answers and you help them cross this bridge. You see something in them before they can see it in themselves. You assure them that it's possible to be more than they are Therefore, they can earn more than they've got, have more than they possess. This is one of the great arts in the world. And here's what's exciting about this art. It pays big money because now you operate a unique philosophy taught first in the Bible. John Kennedy taught it in his inaugural speech. Zig Ziglar's got one of the best ways to put it. And that's the secret to wealth, the secret to wealth and fortune first taught in the Bible. Because the question was asked, how can we achieve greatness, great wealth, great power, great influence, great recognition, great self-esteem? How can we achieve greatness? The master teacher was asked, and here was his formula for achieving personal greatness. He said, find a way to serve the many, for service to many leads to greatness. For those that are interested, some people aren't interested, but for those that are, service to many leads to greatness. Someone says, well, best I can do is just take care of myself, which is okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Someone says, I got enough bills of my own. I can't worry about someone else's bills. That's okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Greatness is helping people pay their bills. You forget about yours because if you help enough people pay theirs, yours disappear. Help people with problems. Your problems disappear. The key to greatness, the master teacher taught is finding a way. Now, a lot of people would like to serve many people, but they don't have a way. And what's exciting about you and your business is you've now got the way, whether you use it or not, it's up to you. Whether you cash it in or not is up to you. Whether you make a fortune or just a little, that's all up to you. Each person's ambition, it's called the same marketing, the same product. These products are the same for everybody here. The marketing system is the same. The difference is each person's philosophy and each person's individual ambition. But whatever your ambitions are, now you've got the ways and means. And here's what you've got the ways and means to do. Serve as many people as you would like. Now, here's what's exciting about recruiting. With what you're involved in here, you can directly and indirectly affect the lives of dozens of people. Some of you are gonna directly and indirectly affect the lives of hundreds of people. And some of you, if you wish, can directly and indirectly affect the lives of thousands of people. And the pay is accordingly. If you affect a few, you earn that pay. If you affect the many, you earn that pay. But the secret is found in the Bible. Service to many leads to greatness. Now, John Kennedy said it in his inaugural speech. Here's what he said. Don't ask 
Don't we wish that was the current political philosophy? Where is John Kennedy and his philosophy? John Kennedy said, don't ask. That's important if you understand philosophy. He said, don't ask what the people can do for you. Don't ask what the country can do for you. Don't ask what the government can do for you. That's not how you get rich. That's not how you have high self-esteem. That's not how you get trophies to put on the mantle above the fireplace, asking what the people can do for you. Don't ask, he said, what the people can do for you, but ask, what could I do for my country? And the country means the people. What could I do for the people? I want trophies, I want recognition, I want high self-esteem. I would even like, like a chance to make a fortune. John Kennedy says it's easy. Don't ask what the people can do for you, but ask, what could I do for the people? Could I directly and indirectly serve many in my country? Now, Zig probably said it best. Zig says money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. Zig says, my dentist told me, Zig, only floss the teeth you want to keep. <laughs> you know, forget the rest. But here, Zig is famous for this now. This is one of Zig's philosophies. And it goes right along with the other two, the Bible and John Kennedy. Here's what Zig says. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now, wanting everything you want, we call that self-interest. But it's, it, it's okay to have self-interest if you do it in a positive way. By helping enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now you can accomplish all that by learning this next skill called recruiting. And I learned it and it made me fortunes. So now I've got three skills, milking cows, making sales and recruiting. Here's the next skill I learned that paid big money, organizing. Once you got a few, get them to work together, see, and that's magic. Getting people to work together is magic. Now, yes, it's challenging, like having some, you know, several in members of your family getting them to work together is challenging, but it's magic. Getting husband and wife to work together is challenging, but it's magic when it happens. But everything magic is challenging. Just got to jot that down. Everything magic is challenging. But once you figure out the challenge and go for it, then the magic occurs. Let me tell you how magic, how magical people working together is. Let me quote the Bible again. It says, if two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing is impossible. Just try that on for your mental size. If two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing's impossible. Everybody's looking for a challenge. Here's what I teach, especially the kids. Here's the best challenge in the world. Let's go do it. Not you go do it. Let's go do it. If two or three of us decide on a common purpose to do it, nothing's impossible. Working together, organizing. Now, when everybody's an independent, now it's a little more challenging. Like having kids, they've each got their own opinions. They've each got their own uh, ambitions and desires. It, it's, it's challenging. You've got a variety, but that's what makes life the variety. And it is in your business. It is challenging getting people to work together. It's like herding cats. You know, sheep are easy. Sheep are easy, but you got to try cats herding cats. But if you can possibly get it done, the power is so immense when you get people to work together. Here's one of the powers of working together, shared testimonials. If I've got somebody new and you're there and I'm there, I give them my testimonial, you give your testimonial. Maybe what tips the scales in getting me a new person is not my testimonial, but my partner's testimonial. Somebody I'm working with, their testimonial got it. Shared testimonials are so powerful. That's why getting working together is okay, is powerful. Now, working by yourself is okay. All this stuff is okay. Everybody needs to know though, where are the advantages? And these are some of the advantages. I learned to organize, paid big money. Here's what I next learned to do, promote. Promotion now pays staggering money. Now the company comes up with what we call major promotion. Here's what you've got to come up with, the smaller promotions. The company comes up with major recognition. You've got to come up with small recognition for your people around you. The top five, the company's got top five. You've got your own top five in maybe two or three categories. Top five, top five, top five. And those little recognitions to reach certain levels in the company, you have to take major steps. But for you, recognition, let them take small steps. Here's one of the secrets of your kind of business, rewarding people for small steps of progress, rewarding people. Sometimes it's just recognition, handshake, pat on the back. Mary, you're doing a fabulous job. And you figure out what those recognitions are, small steps of progress.
Guess what promotion pays if you learn it well? Big money. Getting people to do something they wouldn't ordinarily do by themselves. People will do some unique things by themselves, but if you can figure out a way to say, Mary, if you do this and this, she says, well, I'll go for it. Now, she, she wouldn't have thought of that on her own. Here's what works magic. It's better than money. Money is a bit unimportant. Here's what's important. Ingenuity. The best place to wake up your ingenuity is what you're doing right now. Representing a unique product and getting customers, recruiting distributors and promoting and all this stuff. Ingenuity. Figuring out a way. If it doesn't work this way, we'll work another way. I used my ingenuity, made a fortune. I learned promotion and it paid big money. Here's the next I learned. Communication. How to conduct a meeting. I learned identification, logic and reason. Attack and confess. Solution. Simple deals on communication. Wasn't easy for me at first. I stood up to give my first presentation. My mind sat back down. Right? Y'all been through that? Opened my mouth, nothing came out for a while. But here's what I did. I did it again. Just jot that phrase down. I did it again. That's the secret to how I got here. 35, 40 years later, it's how I got here. I did it once, it was uncomfortable. That first presentation was so lousy. If I hadn't have been doing it, I'd have gone home. <laughs> it was not that good. But here's the secret to how I got here. I did it again, and then I did it again, and then I did it again, and I did it again. I remember when I first decided to be a little more animated, right? And walk out away from the podium, right? Get out from just behind the podium. So I got out there and then I thought, how do you get back? <laughs> Whoa, I'm stranded out here. <laughs> Remember those times doing something for the first time? So learn communication, how to affect other people with words. That's the greatest art in the world to learn how to affect other people with words. Key phrase, don't be lazy in language. If you learn to use the gift of your own language wisely, it can make you a fortune and build an incredible life. Here's three other things I learned. One is to train, training people how the business work. And then I've used another word called teach, train and teach. And only to say this, training people how the business works, teaching is how life works. Because here's what all of us need for the 21st century, business skills and life skills. The life skills are leadership skills. The life skills are learning how to set goals. Now here's the ultimate skill to learn that can transform your life and the life of whoever will listen. The ability to inspire. Inspire means help people to look up a little higher than where they are and wish they could get there and inspire them that it's possible. Here's how we inspire by our own testimony. If I can do it, you can do it. Here's how else we inspire by others testimonial. If they can do it, Mary, you can do it. Getting people to see themselves better than they are. Getting people to see themselves richer than they are. Getting people to see themselves more capable next year than they are this year. Getting to see themselves in the future. To help both your kids and your people, here's what you must learn to do. Number one, help people to see themselves as they are. If people have made mistakes, they gotta know it. You can't go on making mistakes and hope to achieve. Mistakes have to be corrected. And you've got to do it with your children, help them to see themselves as they are. If they've messed up, here's what you've got to say. You've messed up. But here's what's important as a parent, don't leave them in the mess. Some parents, you know, tell their kids they've messed up and then they leave them in the mess. They don't paint a better picture. Here's what you could become with just a couple of more changes. Rather than this, here's what you could be. So we must help our children see themselves as they are, but here's the greatest gift, to help our children see themselves better than they are. To transport them not only past to see their mistakes, but transport them to the future to see their opportunity to see the person they can become. My mentor had that greatest gift to help me to see myself better than I was. At first it was difficult to see, then I started to believe, and that's how I got here today. He said, one of these days, Mr. Owen, you'll walk into a room full of people and you will hear some of them say, that's him, that's the famous man. I, I said, well, that could never happen to me. He said, trust me. If you keep working hard on the disciplines like you're doing right now, that'll happen. You'll walk into a room full of people and you'll hear one say, that's him, that's the famous man. He saw it and he tried to get me to see it. And now finally it's happened. I think when I walked in here today, I think I heard someone say, that's him, that's the famous man. <laughs> and if it can happen for me, it can happen for you. Just master these skills to inspire. Here's what else I, I learned, the skills of building an organization. Learn to work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. You must be like life itself, respond to deserve, not to need. It doesn't say if you need, you will have a harvest. 
It doesn't say if you need a harvest, you'll have a harvest. It's not what it says. It says if you plant, chances are good you'll have a harvest. If you plant, you will reap. Not if you need, you will reap. So we must be like life itself. Respond to the people who deserve it by planting, by taking the first step. Even God himself says, if you move toward me, I'll move toward you. That's the condition. You move toward me, I'll move toward you, says the Almighty. Now he could also say, you don't move, I don't move. You say, well, that's arbitrary. Well, when you're God, you can set it up that way. Now, learn to work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. Now, here's what's the next step. Teach people how to deserve your time. Teach people how to deserve your attention. Teach people how to deserve a phone call. Say, Mary, you just take this one step and I take two steps. You take two steps, I take five steps. You don't step, I don't step. But this isn't hard now. You step, I step. You respond, I respond. You try, I try. You make a call, I back you up. Learn to teach people how to deserve your time and your attention. Next, I learned to work by group more than individual. Here's why, 80% of the people do 20% of the business. So 20% of the people you can work with individual, 80% you have to work with by group. But group is very powerful, less confrontational. Then here's what's important for all of you to learn. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three on your back. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three on your back. And I'm sure all of you have already gotten that experience, even though you've been here a short time. Some people will try to get on your back. That's where we got that expression. Get off. We're... That's where we got that. A guy discovered somebody on his back and said, what? I can't carry you. Get. Now, if you're like some I see here, you know, six foot four and you weigh 300 pounds, you might carry one, and if, if you were really big enough, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or something, you might carry two, but you can't carry. When babies are born, they were not designed just to be carried. Babies were not born to be carried all their life. Someday you got to try your legs. Someday you got to try your wings. Someday you got to try. Even if you fall down, you got to try, because you can't just crawl around all your life. You can't be carried all your life. So as quickly as possible, you can help a thousand, but you can't carry three. Next, don't expect the pear tree to bear apples. I used to try to change everything. You can hang apples on a pear tree. I'm telling you, it won't help. You can put up a sign, this is an apple tree. Sure enough, come the season, pears. Here's what I learned. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. Incredible. Capital in your business isn't what matters. Okay? It's not the money that buys you a future. It's your skills that buy you a future. Money and no skills, and I'm telling you, you're still poor. Money and no ambition, where are you? Money and no courage, you're broke. A little bit of money and a whole lot of courage. That's all we need. I'm looking for people when I'm recruiting back in those days, and the money didn't matter. What mattered to me was somebody's willingness, somebody's ingenuity, somebody's willingness to try, right? If they had a dollar to invest, that was plenty for me. A dollar and some ambition, and I can show you how to get rich, and it'll be one of the classic stories of the company. I go to recruit somebody, they say, I don't have any money. See, I've been looking for you for six months. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you how to do it without any money. Because here's the rules of capitalism. Jot this down. You can either buy and sell, or if you're in certain circumstances, you can sell and buy if you've got ambition. Now, if you haven't got ambition, we can't cure that, and money won't cure lack of ambition. But if you've got a dollar and some ambition, I'll show you how to get rich. And even if you don't have a dollar, I'll show you how to get rich, because you can sell and buy. Somebody says, as soon as the product arrives, I'll sell it. Then you don't understand. You don't understand the magic of fortune if you say, I have to wait till it gets here to sell it. And you probably don't understand the value of your own story. Once I understood that, I knew I was going to be wealthy. That's why right in the beginning, I started giving big tips. I knew I was going to be wealthy. I say, wow, this guy tips like a rich man. Say, That's right. He tips like a rich man. <laughs> Even in the beginning, I tipped like a rich man. Do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read. Do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. You'll start doing 
different things with the same circumstances. Since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. And then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. Few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take blaming yourself instead of the marketplace, taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a challenging mission. And this one was a little tough for me. He said, Mr. Rohn, you've got pennies in your pocket. You've got nothing in the bank. The creditors are calling. You're behind on your promises. And he says, here's how that occurs. You've attracted, up until now, you've attracted the things to you because of the person you've become. Now I said, well, how can I change all that? He said, very simple. If you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. So I said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my self. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. And start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job, work hard on yourself and develop the graces all of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing, not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside, work on your philosophy, work on your attitude, work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change. But I did before he died at age 49, who taught me some extraordinarily simple things. He only went to the ninth grade in school, never finished high school, never went to college, never went to university. So he put his ideas and his experiences in very simple language, which I think for me, you know, a kid from the farms of Idaho, uh, that simplicity was so important. Because if it would have been technical, I'd have missed it. If it would have been mystic, I, you know, I would have, you know, backed away. But it was just basic, blunt, A, B, C, familiar stuff that I hadn't thought of before. And he did start to remind me, and those ideas changed. Mr. Schof was the one when I said, you know, this is all they pay. He said, you've been working six years, Mr. Owen, how come you're not doing better? And I said, this is all the company pays. He says, well, that's not true. I said, no, this is my page. This is all the company pays. He said, no, this is all the company pays you. I thought, that's a new way to look at it, right? He said, doesn't the company pay two, three, four, five times this amount to other people? I said, well, yes. He said, well, then this is not all the company pays. It's all they pay you. And if you qualified, wouldn't your income grow two, three, four, five times? I said, I suppose. So he said, we don't have to work on the company. We have to work on you. See, that was the beginning of what he called the phrase personal. I told him things cost too much. He said, no, you can't afford them. I thought, well, that's a new concept. I hadn't thought about that. You know, we put some of the valuable things on the high shelf, so you can't get to them until you qualify. If you want the things on the higher shelf, you've got to stand on the books you read. Every book you read, you get to stand a little higher so you can get the things on the higher shelf. See, I learned those concepts. It was so incredible. 
And here was the most important one. Success is something you attract by the person you become. See, that phrase changed my life. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue. It's like chasing a butterfly, you can't quite catch it. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. See, those were new concepts to me. I'm just working hard trying to make a living. Here's what he said to me, this changed my life. I got a chance to teach this in Moscow and across Russia. Three visits, now the fourth. Here's what Shov taught me. Profits are better than wages. Nobody taught me that in high school. Nobody taught me that. I went to one year of college. Nobody taught me. Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. And how could you work on both a living and a fortune? He said, well, you could start part-time working on your fortune while you're working full-time on your living. I thought, wow. Now he said, it's fun to get up in the morning. Not just getting up, go to work to pay the rent but to get up to go to work to make a fortune. First to make a living for my family, second to make a fortune. And he taught me how to make both a living and a fortune. Guess what I did? I learned how to make both a living and a fortune. And I found out anybody could do it once they get the information. And at age 25, I started receiving this extraordinary information. Here's what he said. Your income is directly related to your philosophy, not to the economy. I thought no one ever told me that. I kept hoping the economy would change. He said, no, your philosophy has to change. I assured him that I had my fingers crossed. He said, that won't help. Then what could I do to change my income and multiply it by two, by three, by five, by 10, and then multiply it by 10 again? What could I do? And he started giving me the disciplines and the process of learning the skills to change my life. This was an extraordinary man. Those were extraordinary times for me. Life changing in every manner that you can imagine, but very simple ABC concept. Here's what I learned. Not to search for the exotic until you've discovered the basic. And those basic philosophies that he shared with me during that time were life-changing. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue, chase, run after. Success is something you develop, something you become. You attract success. So the whole key to unlock all the treasures, whether it's economic treasures or spiritual treasures, financial, social, personal, every way you can possibly think of, is by your own personal development. And then he added one more, which is so important, and it's probably worth the price of the seminar. Here it is. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here. The major question to ask on the job is what am I becoming here. Not what am I getting, what am I becoming. So it's very important what you become. Because what you become attracts. If you become cynical, you attract cynicism. What you become attracts. So this whole subject of personal development was so vitally important to me. It changed my life. I was a millionaire by age 30. And that was just the economic part. It took me six years from age 25 to age 30. It was unbelievable. Remember, be a student, not a follower. And here's what you must always do. Design your own personal life. I'm very happy for people to take notes in my seminar. But I'm also just as happy if somebody says, hey, this is not for me. Tear up all these notes and throw them away. That's just as valid for me. Remember, be no one's disciple. Chart your own course. Make what you do the product of your own conclusion. What I'm saying here is be your own person. You don't have to be a model of someone else. You don't have to do it like anybody else. Right? Do it like yourself. Buy what you want to buy. Listen to what you want to listen to. Make changes if you want to make changes. And don't make changes. Right? It's your life. I'm telling you. And don't let anybody persuade you any different. Success is not a stereotype. Success is not a Ferrari. Success is not an automobile. It's not a house. It's not a place. It's not money in the bank. It's not a million dollars. That's not success. Success is the continual unfolding of the design of your own life and pulling it off. That's what success is. The continual unfolding of the design of your own personal life and pulling it off in whatever degree you wish. That is success. Successful in doing whatever you want to do that makes sense to you, for you, your family, your responsibilities. Or take on responsibilities or refuse responsibilities. That's strictly all up to you. 
We've been given the power of choice. Every life form except human beings operates by instinct in the genetic code. Now, why not human beings? Because here it is. We've been given the dignity of choice. We're not like a robot. We're not stuck like a tree, using up all the nourishment, nothing left, now you die because you can't change location. Not true. Humans can go north, south, east, west. Humans can change, do anything they want to do. We've been given the dignity. But here's what's interesting about all life form except humans. Every life form except humans strives to the max of its potential. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it possibly can. You never heard of a tree growing half as high as it could. No. No, that is impossible. But I want you to know that while they're getting the diamonds and the millions, there are a lot of people around the world. For them, it is the worst of times. The best of times and the worst of times. That's called serious matter. How come such a difference from those who can reach such incredible heights and those who haven't yet found the answers for their life and their health and their future? We just have to ponder that and let that give us a note of seriousness. A note of serious. It's serious whether you win or lose. It's serious whether you succeed or fail. It's serious whether you've got a good future carved out for yourself or you do not have. These are serious matters. Matters of the heart are serious. Matters of income are serious. Matters of supporting your family, serious. Are you serious? Why? We got a serious matter here to discuss. We haven't come with the latest 10 stories. We've come with a serious matter. And I want you to take on that serious tone. You've got some serious products that answer a serious need out there in the marketplace. And I'm asking you to take it serious. Take your own future serious. What you can do for your family, take it serious. This is serious business. So that's the first thing I want to bring to you, to have the best year ever this year, so that you can say, I made my best and finest contribution to see that goal reached. Not just for the figure for the figure, but for all that the figure represents, for the healing it represents, the restoration of broken lives that it represents. And people that are discouraged about their life and their chances, now encouraged on a new road for all that that represents, willing to make the studies, willing to make the commitment, willing to do the learning, find better ways to choose the words, find better ways to reach inside, get heart and soul, mix it all together, and make an impact on people. But here's the best motivation we've got going, the proof of our success. When we bring our success stories to this platform, that's enough motivation. When we bring our dedication and let it show, we let the work of our hands show, that's the motivation we want, right? Not just excitement. Just excitement alone won't do it. Just because you've listened to those millionaire tapes one time is no sign you've got it. I'm asking you to listen to them over and over and over. I'm asking you to dedicate yourself to a new level of learning. You know, study, learn, grow, change, develop. Never let it be said you didn't learn, right? If you want to solve your problems, you got to learn. If you want to take advantage of an opportunity, you got to learn. Develop your own personal philosophy here. Philosophy, major determining factor in how your life works out. Each person's philosophy is like the set of the sail. The same wind blows on us all. The difference in where we arrive at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year is not the wind that blows. And the wind is blowing around the world. The world is in solution. Things are a changing. The walls have come down. All kinds of things are happening. In Russia tonight, today, the winds are blowing. But what's going to make the major difference? Each person's personal philosophy that sets a better sail, sets a better sail. So don't ask for a more favorable wind. That's like wishing something that's not going to occur. Don't ask for better seeds and soil. All you got is what's available. Don't curse what you got. On this planet, all we got is the seed that's here, the soil that's here. The miracle of life that's here, the opportunity that's here, the seasons that are here, that's all we got. Wherever you've come from in your country, the economy you got, that's all you got. In America, our economy, that's all we got. The government, that's all we got. The marketplace, that's all we got. Whatever you do, don't criticize all you got. The key is to set a better sail and turn what you've got into the miracle of your future. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. You might go home and set a whole new pace for yourself, and we call it cleaning up neglect. Should walk around the block, could walk around the block for your good health, don't walk around the block. See, you're on the wrong track. Should read, could read, don't read, on the wrong track. Should call, could call, don't call, on the wrong track. Could change, should change, don't change. You're on the wrong track.
Letters you haven't written, conversations you haven't had with your family, somebody you should sit down with when you get back home, get that job done. Don't let neglect destroy your days, destroy your life, and destroy your future. Go back and do what you can. And if you'll do what you can, then life will give you some extraordinary things to do. If you start first with the smallest of disciplines and do not neglect them and do not disregard them as being trifling. Everything matters. Everything's important. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. If you hadn't thought of it before, here it is. Everything affects everything else. It's so easy to be casual and say, well, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. Of course, some things matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. As if you'll be faithful, if you'll be disciplined when the amounts are small, will make you a ruler, give you a position of authority when the amounts are many. Just take care of your disciplines when the amounts are small, and then life will see to it that you get some extraordinary numbers to work with, like you saw the stories displayed here. Do not disregard the smallest of disciplines. Let us not neglect, do not neglect the smallest of disciplines and build on that foundation and you can have everything you could possibly want. You say, well, what can I do about the upcoming winters of my life? The challenges that I know I'm going to face. Here's what you can do. You can get wiser and stronger and better. Just make a list of that trio of words. Wiser, stronger, and better. Go home smarter than you came. Go home with more ideas than you came with. Next get stronger. You can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the inspiration muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There isn't anybody here that can't get stronger. Next time we see you may not even recognize you. How strong you're going to be able to become in language, style, personality, the ability to cope, the ability to handle with anything that happens, no matter what happens. The key is not to wish for a better winter. The key is to wish for more strength, more wisdom, more courage, get better, get wiser, get stronger. And you've got to learn not only to nourish your values, you've got to learn to do battle with your enemies. Whatever threatens you, I'm asking you to threaten it back. Take care of your responsibility, but don't take anything off anyone. Somebody wants to destroy your chances for a good future, by their negative talk, negative thinking, putting it all down, I'm telling you, walk away if you have to, walk away. Whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Whatever threatens your opportunity, threaten it back. Now, some of our enemies are on the outside, but here's the most important thing to understand. Some of our enemies are on the inside. Let me give you a quick list. Indifference. You got to do battle with your own indifference. Boy, it's easy to coast. Especially if you've accomplished something, you know, extraordinary now. Somebody says, I gotta relax. Here's the key, not too long. The weeds will take all you plant if you rest too long. Don't rest too long. Indecision, you gotta make those decisions. The ones that don't turn out to be good gives you experience to make better decisions. Don't let much time go by without making some decisions. The ones that you can make quickly, make them quickly. The ones that take time, take your time. But get those decisions made. Don't let indecision be an enemy, rob you of the future, empty your bank account, leave you with zero in the purse. Don't let that happen. The next one is doubt. Sure, there's doubts on the outside. People doubt that America's going to make it. People doubt that Europe's going to make it. People doubt that Russia's going to make it, that Poland's going to make it, that Czechoslovakia's going to make it. They doubt the whole world is going to make it. But I'm asking you not to pick up all those doubts. I'm asking you to have some faith, have some courage, believe, drive your doubts into a small corner. Don't let them loose like a mad dog, drive you into a small corner. Don't doubt the future. Don't doubt the possibilities. Don't doubt the extraordinary gifts that your distributors bring to your organization. Don't doubt that. Here's the most important one of all. Don't doubt yourself. If I've got miracle working power to change my life, so do you. If I've got the ability to change, so do you. If I've got the ability to read, so do you. If I can discover, so can you. If I can grow, you can grow. 